we are on. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Martin Poisson. I am the director of HR for Motive Studios. We are honored this morning to be the very first showcase, I believe, of the Mega Mix. And I have the pleasure to be with Patrick Klaus, who is the general manager of Motive, and Ambre Lisuré, who is our director of operations. We're going to be spending the next 45 minutes or so um, with you to discuss a few components that I'll get to in a few, um, in a few minutes. Uh, we will also have the opportunity to take questions also on the, on the chat. Um, our conversation this morning is going to be mostly in English, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask them either in French, in English, in German, I believe, and in Spanish as well. <laughs> I think we should be, we should be well equipped for um, that. So the three components that we're going to be discussing this morning, uh, first of all, is we have the chance to have Patrick and Ambre. Um, uh, we're going to be discussing their leadership uh, experience. So we're going to be asking them a few questions about that. Then the second part of our conversation is going to be how do we build highly engaged and high performing teams? And finally, the third component will be about um, how do we foster inclusivity in our culture and in our daily practices. Patrick, Ambre, how are you this morning? Ça va super bien. Plein <laughs> forme, feeling great. Yes, same. Excited. <laughs> Excellent. So instead of going with a more traditional type of, um, of introduction, let me start with a very, very generic question before we delve into our three main subjects. What excites you the most right now? So many things, but I think, um, and to be honest, as soon as I'm excited, I speak really fast. So if I go too fast, <laughs> let me know. Um, I am excited about coming back to the office. We started having people coming back and seeing uh, everyone after a year and a half, uh, almost alone at home. I'm excited to see my colleagues, go for coffee and just discuss about anything. So, yeah. I, uh, I I get excited and passionate about many things, but you know, right now when I look particularly at, at the games industry, I've, I've been in the games industry for over 20 years, and I'm as excited and, and passionate as I was 20 years ago about working in games, and specifically about about Motive, about our studio, about our games. Uh, last year we released Star Wars Quadrants. It was our first fully fledged game uh, coming out of Motive. We were really proud of that. Earlier this year, we announced that we were making a Dead Space uh, remake, which is super exciting. And then uh, longer term, we have homed in on, on a new mission for the studio, which is uh, to uh, make innovative AAA action games uh, within iconic worlds uh, where every player feels like the hero. So, you know, in order to do this, we're going to have some gripping and meaningful uh, storytelling mixed with play of relation, authentic, relatable and diverse characters unique gameplay uh, experiences linked with the play of fantasy. And of course, in order to do this, a super strong and in in inclusive culture that will allow us to move mountains. So I'm very excited about all of that. That's a lot to be excited <laughs> about. <laughs> For me, frankly, I'm quite excited to be sitting here with you both in person, finally, and not on Zoom in this magnificent living room. Of ours. <laughs> so how about we start with the first part of our conversation, and it's all about leadership. So my first question is for you both, and it's what was your first experience as a leader, and what did you learn from it? Um, I think for me it was when I was delegate class, so class representative, um, when I was at school. Um, the thing that I learned from that was um, that you have an influence on people. So at one point I was not agreeing with something that was done. So I decided not to go to the activity and I, some people followed me not going there. So I was like, oh, okay. So everything that I do actually has a leader has an impact on people and some people are gonna follow me on that. So it was really a, um, something that I, I try to uh, keep in mind when I'm working as a leader right now. Uh, on my side, I'm, I'm gonna open up. This is a little bit like uh, therapeutic. Right? <laughs> It's a safe place, isn't it? Um, so um, I was playing rugby in the, in the south of France, and I remember vividly I was made captain of the rugby team. 
Um, and the way I, I treated that first match was that uh, I needed to control everything and be super bossy. And essentially, I was, I was not relying on the team. Now, rugby is played with 14 other players on top of you. Uh, so it's like the ultimate team sport. And if you're, if you're selfish, uh, if you're not working as a team, uh, you, you pay the price. And guess what? We lost that game. So that, that, that taught me quite a lot on, on humility and the power of teamwork. Absolutely. <laughs> um, my next question is for Patrick. How did you figure out what kind of leader you wanted to be? You know, it's, um, it's something that um, you figure out over the years of experience. I, I don't think anyone you know, has, a, has a playbook where the way they start off as a leader is the way they're always going to be. You know, there's, a, there's a natural evolution you know, through, uh, through the years. You know, certainly the things that, uh, that are top of mind for me today is you know, of, of putting the team first you know, and really showing, showing that you, you care for the team. Uh, leading by example as much as possible. You know, I love the, the Quebecois expression of uh, les bottines doivent suivre les, les, les papines. Uh, courage, authenticity, and you know, finding the sweet spot also of, um, of uh, humanity whilst pushing for excellence. You know? uh, ultimately, it's, uh, leadership is, is, uh, is a journey that, keeps con that continues, right? Uh, you're never done being a leader and growing as a leader. Yeah. True. Yeah. Absolutely. So with that in mind, my next question is for both of you. What were the most difficult skills for you to 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 get good at, uh, for lack of a better word, or to that you noticed at some point that um, perhaps it was a little bit of a shortcoming and then you needed to up it up a little bit? Okay. Um, I'll take this one and like you. I think for me, and I still try to master that one, um, is, you know, when you're in a plane and they tell you that you have to take your own mask before helping someone else, um, is taking care of myself. I, I tend to think that I need to take care of my team first and then when I'll have time, I'll take care of me. Uh, but I think it should be the other way around without too much focus on yourself, of course. But if, if you're not here and if you're not healthy in, uh, physically and mentally, then you won't be able to help your team the best that you can and support them the best that you can. So I'm still learning that. Um, the, the, the pandemic and working from home is not helping in terms of, of work-life balance, but I think it's, it's really uh, um, for everyone to find their own ways of, of coping with that. But yeah, still learning on that one. <laughs> yeah, on, on my side, uh, I would say um, it's around uh, blind spots. Um, and basically, basically, you don't know what you don't know. Um, and um, putting conscious efforts um, through through training and thinking to develop a higher sense of self awareness, um, how you come across the, the what what is perceived, you know, uh, through the words you say, through the way you say things, uh, it, it's all it's all something that uh, that is uncomfortable but super powerful as you get better at it. So mm -hmm. yeah, self awareness. Yeah, it goes a lot to say about that. How we are, our actions. Have great repercussions yeah. on um, on others when we are when we are leaders, and yeah. sometimes it's it's easy to forget that. Um, so a regular reminder is always a good thing. And both of you, I heard I heard you both so far say that you know we're not done learning, and that's the beauty of it, right? It's a journey. Being a leader is not something that at some point you master, right? No. It's something that you continuously try to improve and get better at. True. Lifelong yeah. journey. Okay. Oh. Um, this one is actually perfect for always. Who outside of our industry inspires you? And there is a long list on that one. <laughs> um, the first, I think the first um, top people I would say uh, are my parents. Um, they've done a lot for me, but I think in the way that my mom is devoting herself to the family, um, my dad to, to uh, helping um, the country with the job that he was doing before, and also in terms of leadership, the way that he was handling everything. Um, my great aunt uh, for resilience, uh, she's battling right now her fourth cancer. So that's, I think for me, it's a, a great example of someone being resilient. Um, 
my best friend for managing a career while still having two kids to take care of. Um, but I think um, I also find not only in, in adults, but in the way that uh, I interact with young people. So I do a lot of, of uh, mentorship uh, sort of work. And every year when I go to a, um, a program called Technovation, um, when I see the, uh, the interest and the way that our young uh, girls, but also boys, everyone is they're trying to change the world and to be involved in their community um, and the passion that they have and how they think about the community before themselves. For me, it's really inspiring. I really love that. And every year I learn from them. Uh, I learned about TikTok before it was a different thing. So um, I learned about um, technological waste last year with the the, men, the girls I mentor. Um, for me, it's, it's a good source of inspiration every year uh, to see the newcomers. Yeah. I'm hearing some themes here. I'm hearing resilience. I'm hearing drive, yes. generosity, or selflessness. Yeah, great, great traits to have as as leaders. Um, thank you, Patrick. The most um, important leadership lessons that you've learned throughout your career up until today. It's a great question, Martin. Maybe there's three or four that, uh, is that okay? Can I give you three? Is no, it? you can give me four <laughs> or five. <man. laughs> so, um, probably certainly from a vision point of view, uh, one important thing that I learned is that you can't be the best at everything. Um, so you know, both, both for myself individually, but then collectively as, as a studio, um, you want to focus, you know, you, you, want, you want to focus on what you want to become world class at and put all of those efforts in, in that direction uh, rather than try to be, uh, have a little bit of everything, but essentially be, be the, master, the master of none, you know, so that's probably a big thing. Uh, another kind of key aspect, you know, is uh, finding the balance between ambition, but not biting more than you can chew you know, which would not set up your teams for success, you know, and uh, these things take time, you know, so um, you, you want to go at it the, the right way in order to build rock solid foundations uh, so that your, your teams um, have those conditions to do the best work of their career. Um, and then maybe a third thing that has become more and more important for me is that um, we want sustainability and perennity in our business, you know, so that means that in the decisions that, that, that we make, uh, we've always that, got that top of mind. You know, you never want to burn out the teams. Um, so it's not just about shipping a game. It's about ship, shipping a game and then using that as a springboard towards a, a long-term future. You know, you, that's, uh, that's something that's super important for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not biting more than we can than we can chew. I think it's always a little bit of a, a danger that is lurking, right? We are... Um, ambitious, we build um, ambitious projects and um, to, to, to keeping ourselves in check on a regular basis is also really important. Yeah, exactly. And especially when you talk about the, the, the not burning out and our, our employees, our teams are the greatest resource that, that we have and it's something that is completely at the forefront yeah. of our of our mind. Yeah, you know, I think I think uh, once employees, when employees know that you really care uh, about them, they will also start caring about what they do and about the studio and about the mission. You know. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, absolutely. True. Um, so the um, my next question is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in your opinion, um, what is the biggest challenge leaders face today? Um, well, I think it's, it's the, the um, everything is always changing. And two years ago, I think if you told all the leaders that we were going to have to go through a pandemic, no one will have guessed that one. Um, and it's really showing us that we need to be able to adapt to a context that is always changing, but also especially right now that we're coming back to, to the office and coming back to what we call the new normal. How can we evolve our mentality and our mindset not to just apply the same thing that we used to do and just realize that things have changed and that we need to understand that being a leader before is not the same thing as being a leader right now. Um, that you may not have your, your full team that is on site. You may have some people that are um, even just in Montreal, but through Zoom or people that are around the world or even just in Toronto or Quebec or opening, for example. So how do you understand the way that you need to lead your team 
um, throughout this context that is that is changing. And I'm actually glad that it's, it's changing because it's going to be able for us to reach more people and have more diversity in our team ultimately. But then as leaders, we need to understand also what it includes and what is our role in this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it implies also that um, we need to stay quite humble about about this, right? We know what we know and we don't know what we what we don't know. So it's about listening and uh, then putting into into action. Yeah. Yes. Are you ready for part two? Yes. Excellent. Um, um, subject, I think that is very near and dear to our heart. And, um, and it's about how do we build teams that are engaged and um, high performing as well. So Patrick, what defines a world class team? And how do we build them? It's a great question, Martine. So for me, the, 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 the holy grail of a world class team is when there's a group of individuals that are really working as one uh, towards a towards a common mission, uh, willing to show up every day and do the best work of their career, uh, and navigate through the turbulences of making games because it's not easy. You know, there's, there's, there'll be good days and there'll be there'll be harder days. You know, and if everyone is working uh, with amazing synergy as a team. They've got each other's back, you know, and you build collective resilience in order to kind of navigate through all this, you know, and that's super powerful um, when um, when you reach it. Uh, there is no magic wand to building world class teams and it does take time. Uh, or if someone knows of a magic wand, just put it in the chat. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be very useful. Uh, but there's certainly three, three kind of uh, aspects that can uh, become accelerators towards building uh, high performing, highly engaged teams. Uh, one is autonomy, uh, and it's it's really big for us. Uh, we want to trust our teams. We want to empower them. Uh, we want to give them a voice uh, to, uh, to, to come up with ideas, to come up with be better ways of doing things. Um, learning is also a key motivator, right? So uh, all of us like to we like to learn we like to continue to to grow you know so through our practices uh, through our work if you've got the ability to keep learning i think that's that's really powerful and the third one for us is um it's context you know so context uh, in the way you communicate on, on on decision making um is super important for the team because they will understand the big picture uh, they will understand the key role that they all play within that big picture and uh, they will be reassured by the fact that you are coherent in the decision you make um, from what you said you, you may do. That's where sometimes there can be a disconnect when a leader says one thing mm -hmm. and does something else. Mm -hmm. We try to hold the line on being coherent and consistent you know, with, uh, with what, we, what we set out to do. So. I like what you're saying. I like also the, you mentioned quickly the, the trust. I think it's, it's really important in the team. And I'm going to come back to the fact that we're working from home and soon coming back. It's just that it's difficult to get that trust, um, especially when you're not facing each other and you just can't go for a coffee and dis discuss mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. Um, I think that's something that is really important in the team too. And it takes time to, to build that. Uh, it's not just in a, in a year that you're able to, to build that. So I'm looking forward to team activities or, or anything where people will be able to interact with each other and, and really start trusting each other, knowing each other. Um, so that's, I think that the power of, of human interaction is really important mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. And the world that we live in right now is that, you know, always constantly on Zoom. Yes, we've developed new uh, tools to connect with each other, but nothing beats this synergy that you find um, when you are um, seeing each other in person. Absolutely. Yes. My next question is for you both. And it's um, about the attributes that you are looking for in emerging leaders. Um, good question. For, for me, it would be, um, so when you, you're starting and you want to be a leader and you're just starting in your career, um, usually you want to prove yourself. You want to prove that you're the best of the best, which is a good thing. But then you, don't, you, you shouldn't forget about your team and the others. So it's really a question that... Always keep in mind that it's a teamwork, as you mentioned earlier, uh, with your rugby experience. You need to be able to understand that without the others, you can't do anything. It's not anymore four people in a garage and making games. We're hundreds of people around the world. So you need to, to 
consider that and understand it and include it in the way that you're uh, um, going to be leading that team. So the, the teamwork part for me is really the, the main thing. Uh, the rest can be learned, I think. Um, empathy would be interesting also to have and courage. That's the three things that I think are important. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I would add, um, certainly for me personally, I don't want to hire any mini me's. Uh, <laughs> what one what, what Patrick is uh, is bad enough. Um, <laughs> I'm saying this as a joke, but you know we do we do have a tendency. Uh, it's human nature to uh, want to be with people that kind of are a little bit like us, you know. And I'm deliberately trying to bring into the studio um, uh, some different mindsets, you know, because I think they're super powerful. Uh, having said that, there are some key traits that I do look for uh, in emerging leaders. You know, one big one is going to be fire in the belly. You know, that that goes such a long way that. That, 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 that passion you know, can be the difference between making okay games and okay, making amazing games. Um, someone who's going to be curious you know, in order to continue uh, to, to learn, like Amber said, courage you know, is, is also, uh, such a powerful uh, trait of a leader. Not having a huge ego is another big one. And collaboration, collaboration because it's such a teamwork. You know, someone who's a strong collaborator is... I'm, um, I'm hearing uh, a lot that leads to one common theme, and it's all about the soft skills, right? The hard, the hard skills are there, and they're important, and, and they need to be there. But to be what differentiates, from what I'm hearing, a good leader from a great leader, it's all about the soft skills. Yeah, it's more interactive with humans, so it's important, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Patrick, next question is going to be for you. Um, would be amiss not to talk about creativity given the space that we evolve in. So how do we foster creativity uh, within our teams at Motive? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good question. There's, there's many things that, uh, that we put in place in order to foster creativity. It's, it starts at the base. I think it starts by creating a safe, a safe place in the studio uh, where people um, feel good about trying things, about experimenting, about having a voice, regardless of their discipline, you know, everyone's got ideas. You know, so we do try to in encourage uh, encourage that, um, and embracing the uncertainty. You know, is a mindset that that we want to de develop. Certainly, in the early phases of development, you know, con conception and even pre production are good phases uh, to to try new things and to have to have a time in your in your sprint. You know, to experiment a little bit, not necessarily knowing what the result is is going to be. Um, on top of that, you know, obviously, from a more practical point of view, we do a lot of prototyping, rapid prototyping, throw away uh, prototyping also. Um, and feedback. Feedback is, has become super, super important at Electronic Arts and at, at Motive. You know, that feedback loop when you show something uh, new of, of getting feedback from your peers, from your colleagues. Also, we started doing it with, uh, with communities, you know, so literally players. You know, we sh we're showing them some very, very early software. Uh, we're getting some amazing feedback, which we can iterate on. So that's a lot of the, the kind of the, the, the things that we put in place in order to foster creativity. Mm -hmm. um, if I might bounce on on this, um, you both know I've, I've been at EA for a very long time, and uh, even though I am not part of a, a dev team. It's something that I've always, always noticed is that regardless if you are as part of a dev team or one of the support teams is creativity is everywhere. And then you can exercise your creativity, even though you might not be on a on a dev team. And um, I when I'm being asked a question, I always, always answer the same thing in all of the years I've been with EA, very few times have I been said no to if I wanted to put something new in place. Um, so it's more about your bandwidth and more about to a degree, you know, your interest in going above and beyond. But that's a great way. And for me, it's always been great examples in terms of not having like preset boundaries in terms of what you want to achieve and what you want to do and what you want to what you want to try. Absolutely. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, you touched on it a little bit uh, earlier, but still, I'm going to ask you the question. 
Um, I think it's an understatement to say that uh, the last few years, almost few years, have been quite uh, challenging. <laughs> um, as a leader, um, how do you cope with the responsibility of, um, of leading through uh, what can be a, a very unsettling landscape or let's call it murky waters? Uh, my first answer would be uh, food. <laughs> food is helping a lot um no but apart from that um so as a context because I, i'm alone at, at home uh, i think it's helping a lot for me even for zoom to talk to people to be able to say how i feel how i'm perceiving things because especially when you're far um it's it's not easy to understand how are people reacting to things uh you can't really uh, try to gauge the audience so that's something that is difficult uh, being able to uh, to really talk openly with with you both and with the rest of the team, um, I really love the fact that we can I can talk to you both about anything. Uh, you will always be open. I can give um, feedback to either of you. You give feedback to me, and I think it's it's really helping me to be able also to tell you there are days that I just feel like shit and be able to tell you that okay, this is a bad day. Um, but then I feel the support, and I feel that even if I make mistakes, I'll always be supported. And um, I mean, ultimately, we're humans, and I think it's it goes with. Um, um, showing example, as you mentioned, and, and uh, walk the talk. It's if, if we don't show that we're human and that we can also make mistakes, our team will have difficulty also. Um, it's, a, it's a tough time for everyone. We all have a different context. Um, so talking about it, even if it's not directly your manager, or it's uh, for me, it's really helping. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, the more we talk about it, um the more it will inform us in terms of what our team members want, what they care the most about, and it really helps us in planning for the future. Yeah. And as you said, we, we're not robots, you know, we, we are human beings. Um, and, and, then, and that's something, something that we should, uh, we should embrace by not necessarily seeking perfection, you know, and, uh, but by by being ourselves, by doing doing the right thing, by being there for each other, you know, that's uh, something that's super important. You know, um, we will have good days and bad days, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's to give ourselves the okay, right? To just to say it and to be humble enough to say, mm -hmm. okay, today is just it's a drink day. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not that good. Not that great. And today is a good day. <laughs> and today is a good day. Great day. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so how about we move on to um, the last but certainly not least part of our um, conversation this morning, and it's about um, fostering an inclusive um, and uh, diverse culture, um, and how do we um, turn that into daily practices? Great subject. Like it's it. a great subject. Yes. Exactly. So knowing that it's a great subject, <laughs> I'm going to start with Let's you. Go. And the question is, um, uh, in your opinion, what makes our culture unique uh, at uh, Motive? And how do we continue to build on it? Um, well, I think the the we already have um, a strong base for diversity. We need we need to get better for sure. But I think the fact that we're in Montreal and it's a multicultural uh, um, landscape, it's really helping us to have different mindset and to have this open mind that we need to be able to uh, um, to culture that uh, to and to foster that uh, diversity mindset. Um, the the difference in terms of where people are coming from because we're quite a young studio so people are coming a bit from everywhere um also where they're coming in terms of, of culture in terms of are uh, they coming from this country or not the language that they're speaking i think everything for us is um making motive quite unique compared to the other e studios um and i think that's something that we're trying to foster to uh, to get the feedback from everyone and to have everyone being able to voice wherever they come from um that is really hel helping on that It's a perfect answer. <laughs> I have nothing to add. Um, Actually, maybe I maybe one would... thing. Maybe one thing. Um, you know, the, um, one thing I have realized in in recent times is um, you know the importance not just of leading by example, but being super super intentional uh, in in what you do. You know, and one particular one particular aspect is allyship. 
uh, allyship, you know, as a as a white man towards underrepresented talents, you know, perhaps in the, in the past few years, I, you know, I I would I made sure that I uh, led by example, full stop. That's it. Job done. You know, felt good about it. Uh, but in in recent times, you know, through some of the the trainings that I've been been through, I am. Um, I've actually come to the realization that as, as a leader, I need to do more than that. Uh, so it's much more intentional allyship, you know, so being, be, being much more aware of what's going on, you know, in terms of human interactions at the studio, meetings, uh, voice time, interruptions, all these little things, you know, that, uh, uh, that could cause some, uh, some frustrations, you know, so that's something that's, uh, that's top of mind right now for, for me. You said it, these little things, right? Micro habits. This is how we change things. Like if we want to, we can't start by just moving mountains right away. It's in our everyday life, little things, little things. And it starts by being aware and by being self-aware, right? Because if we're not being self-aware and aware of our surroundings, it's going to be pretty much impossible for us to do what you just said, right? So, oh, paying attention to this, paying attention to that. And it's something that is being built upon. Yeah. yeah. And, and the power of feedback, you talked about feedback earlier, but um, what I like is, and then maybe something that people don't see because we interact a lot with each other. Um, uh, but it's the question that sometimes you ask, we, we end a meeting and you're like, okay, did I, can I do anything else to try to, uh, to empower anyone that was in the meeting? Uh, was that okay? Did I talk too much, et cetera? So I love the fact that you're open to this and trying to get feedback so that you can uh, improve yourself and be more an active ally on that one. Yeah, thank you. I think, I think we, we, all, we all try to embrace feedback because we, because we know we're not perfect and we always want to continue uh, getting better and feedback helps us getting mm -hmm. better. So, you know, the, it can be in human nature to, br to bring your gloves up, you know, when, when you get feedback and to get defensive about it and to look for excuses or to get aggressive. Uh, but, you know, we, we, I think because, you know, this, this is a safe place and there's a high level of trust, um, you know, th th that feedback is, mm -hmm. is, is welcome and, it, and is, is taken without any kind of negative reaction. It's all about psychological safety, right? Exactly. Yeah. Psychology, psychological safety comes from trust. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and if there's one of the things that we need to change our mindset about is, is that it's feedback. Um, and it's to, to, to constantly, at least for me, is to, to, to repeat myself, feedback is a gift, right? Is that you're right, gloves up, and then we, we kind of, Obviously, you know, we're, we're, we're proud of what we do and how we do things. And when we get the feedback, we have a tendency of, and it's to let go, let go of that and just kind of take it to continue to, um, to, 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 to get better and to. But it's tough for the person improve. giving the feedback also. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Constructive feedback is very, very, it's, it's an art form, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It takes courage. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Um, Patrick. Yes. As a general manager, why is having a diverse team important to you? So uh, we we've got a mission that is geared towards making games for a global audience. You know, and by global I mean you know, gender, culture, race, all over the world. You know, and um, really, we will only be able to truly uh, make a game for a global audience if the dev team, you know, is representative of our players, of that audience, you know, so that's why we need to make some um, significant uh, efforts over the coming months and years in, in order to, to build that uh, multicultural uh, diversity that we need to make uh, global games. Uh, I would also add that it's quite simply the, the right thing to do. You know, uh, as a, you know, as a society, you know, so uh, it means a lot to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to piggyback on this. So that was why it's important. How do we build a ah. diverse team? <laughs> Love Good it. question. Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so for me, there are three main parts. Um, you need to attract diverse talents. You need to retain within your team, and then you need to grow um, them in your studio. So for for the attract part. Um, 
we need to start really early. Uh, and that's what we're trying to make with all the different initiatives that we have on our outreach program. So being able to uh, have more, and I'm going to talk especially about young girls because that's the part that I'm more involved in, that being able to interest um, and spark the interest into the young uh, women. Uh, for, so we have different programs like Kids Code Jeunesse, Technovation, Gamerella. Um, there is also the uh, Montreal Code, who is really uh, uh, the trying to uh, explain and especially explain to the teachers how the programming and coding is important and why it's important and how they can teach that to kids. Uh, so I think that part, if we have more diverse um, uh, young people interested in video games and STEM in general, then we'll be able to get uh, more people in our in our industry. Then once we have them, we need to retain them. So I really love the the ERG um, groups that the uh, EA put in place. Um, I think it's it's a really good place where people can discuss and interact with each other and discuss sometimes tough uh, tough uh, subject. Um, and then you need to grow them. You need to, uh, uh, especially as leader, to identify the uh, the up and comers, but also in your team, be able to to see who has potential and not just hear and listen to the ones that are more vocal, but also identify those with the best potential and help them grow and help them uh, realize what they are and what they can do in their in their career. It's a lot of, of things that we can do. I think as leader, as you mentioned, I think allyship is also a really good and important thing uh, to keep in mind also in all this. Yeah, uh, training also. You know, we, we do a lot of training uh, with with our teams. Unconscious biases, leading inclusively. Uh, I myself uh, w was lucky as part of the the, the VPs at uh, Electronic Arts to go through multiple modules, uh, which were in in many examples uh, very very touching. Uh, you know, examples of uh, of injustice. Uh, and um, and you know the, I think that has brought the the group to a level of understanding that you know that this this uh, uh, societal issue you know um, is one that needs to stop and that we each have a real role to play there you know within the company so it's brought responsibility and new energy mm -hmm. to sway the needle in the right direction mm -hmm. and it starts from the top yeah. so it's actually good, good that you got training and you're involved in this. And that's something that I really feel that he is doing well. It's it's for leaders to understand that with great powers come great responsibilities, but understand those responsibilities and be able to to be once again, take feedback, be human and understand that we're not perfect. And it's not because we've done same way for many years that we don't need to change right now. So, And it's a journey, right? Same thing as we talked about, you know, the very beginning with leadership. Um, this is a is is a journey and this is another element that we never stop learning um the world moves at a very very fast pace our industry moves at a very very fast pace and this is a core component of 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 it you can never rest on your laurels that's part of the yep. excitement <laughs> exactly it is part of the excitement i do believe that we're going to be ready for the last question um, when it comes to motive, what are you most energized about? Um, well, I'm going to go back to the, the first answer that I give, um, coming back to the office and don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm a big introvert. I think <laughs> when we started going home at the beginning of the pandemic, I was actually happy. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be at home. Uh, but I mean, I, I miss the the interactions i mean being able to see people in real life um so that's and we have so many things coming uh, at the studio that for me it's, it's just being able to do this together interact with each other it's it's yeah i'm excited about that similarly excited also uh, we're, in, we're in a great place uh, as a studio today with our production plan with the talent that we have we have um total support uh, from electronic arts obviously a, a market leader in in the games industry but at the same time, we, um, we have a high degree of uh, empowerment to forge and own our destiny. And I love that. It's super mobilizing for, for me as a leader. And I think it is for our teams also. Uh, so we, it's almost like the, you know, the, we, we're the, the, the sweet spot and uh, the, the good blend of part of a big company, but you know, a little bit of a mindset you know, where we can challenge the status quo and try things. and. And uh, yeah, that's that's super exciting to have that level of um, of accountability to um, to really put motive on the the map with uh, amazing games over the coming years. So I am psyched. 
So am I. <laughs> so am I. I think that um, the 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 future. I think that we've come a long way uh, at Motive, but to see what's coming over the course of the next few years is what I am truly, truly energized by. 